Hi there and welcome to another Bug Bytes tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at Django Ninja which is an API framework for Django and as you can see on the documentation here it's a Django REST framework but it's not the actual Django REST framework this is an alternative to that very popular API library and we're going to dive into what Django Ninja can offer and what it is inspired by in this particular tutorial series. So as it says here, it's a framework for building APIs with Django and it uses Python 3.6 plus type hinting. And um, we're going to see what that means later on. It also offers async IO support and it allows you to define APIs with automatic documentation. So we're going to dive into creating an API for music tracks in this tutorial. Um, so let's get started with that. Now the first thing I'm going to do is pull up VS Code. And in this directory we have a requirements.txt file with two dependencies, obviously Django and of course Django Ninja as well. So the first step here is to um, pip install and we can pip install dash r requirements.txt. Now I've already got these installed in my environment um, and it's probably best practice to do this in a virtual environment but um, that's up to you. Um, so go ahead, pip install that, and once you've done that, we can create a Django project. So Django admin start app and sorry, start project that should be, and we're going to call this DJ Ninja. And that should create a directory here called DJ Ninja with the Django manage.py script, as well as a settings folder here with a settings and URLs and whatnot. Now let's on the command line here we'll cd into dj ninja and what we're going to do is we're going to run python manage.py start app and we'll call the app tracks because what we're going to do is a music API um, for music tracks. It's going to be a crud API um, but in this particular video we're just going to do the setup. We'll move on in the next video to some get endpoints and show you things like query parameters and path parameters and then in the final video we can move on to the post put and delete functionality. So now that we have um, an app called tracks that's given us a folder here and what we need to do now is add this to our settings installed apps. So if we open up the settings.py file go down to installed apps here and we can add tracks to that and that'll add uh, this new app that we've created here to installed apps. Now what I want to do is um, now show you the basics of Django Ninja. We're going to create a test route that just returns a dictionary and what we're going to do is create a file called api.py and in that file we can import um, from Ninja, which is Django Ninja, we can import the uh, Ninja, app, Ninja API. Sorry, um, This is the object that is the top level object in Django Ninja and then what we can do is create an API object and instantiate that Ninja API object. And with this API object here, we can create normal Python functions that are decorated with api.get, for example. And we define as a first parameter the root that we want. So this is us now using Django Ninja. It's, this is kind of similar to Flask, but it's very similar to Fast API. And in fact, Django Ninja is directly inspired by Fast API and it uses uh, Pydantic and other tools to make it very similar to, to Fast API. So let's see that in action here. We'll create a test route here called test. And we just define a normal function and we can take in the request. This is a standard th practice in Django. The first parameter to views or API functions is the request object. And for this one, it's just a test route. So I will return a simple dictionary with one key and one value and we'll see if we can get that working now. Now there is a, there is one more step here to get this hooked up. What I'm going to do is go to the urls.py. We'll delete this big comment here. And let's import from uh, the tracks.api. We'll import the, um, the API object. So what we're doing here is in the tracks app, we have an api.py file. So within that, we have an API object. So that's what we're importing here and the urls.py from tracks.api import api and the reason we do that is because we can define now another set of url parameters um, prefixed by api and this 
Django Ninja API object that we've created has a URLs attribute which will instantiate our URLs based on these decorators. So with that done, we now can test our app and see if it's working. So let's start the Django manage.py run server command. This is the Django development server, which should start up a server. Obviously we've not applied any of the default migrations yet, but we'll do that in a later video. And now we can go to our local host endpoint. I'll just copy paste that in here. And you can see that we get back the JSON response. And this is actually automatically um, serialized to JSON from our API root. This is something that Django Ninja provides out of the box. We return a simple dictionary and it's serialized to JSON. Now we're going to see in greater detail how we can serialize models and serialize objects um, in the future videos. But for now, I think this is the setup complete for this part of the, the app. What we now want to do is we want to um, create a database with the music tracks. Now what I'm going to do is get the tracks into this application. So within the DJ Ninja folder, I'm going to create a data folder. And what we're going to do is grab, um, we're going to create a file called tracks.json. This is going to be the raw data that we're going to import into our database. And we can get that from this uh, GitHub link here, which I will leave in the description. And you can see this in more detail in the blog post. I'm just going to copy the raw content into this JSON file. And then what we'll do is define a Django management command in order to import this data. To do a management command, we will create a management folder and we'll also create a commands folder within that. And inside commands, we can create an init.py and we'll create another command. This is going to be the import command. It's going to be called ingest tracks.py. So let's paste this content in here and I will explain this code um, in a minute, but we have one more step to do on top of that. And let's create a model to represent a track in the database. Now, within the tracks uh, app, we have a models.py file. And what we're going to do is create a model here. And I'm going to model this data off of the tracks.json file. So if you look at this file, you see that for an individual track, we have five fields. We have an ID. We have a title, which is the name of the song. We have the artist who created the song. And we have a duration, which is how long was the song in seconds. We also have a last play. Now you can imagine this data is coming from an app like Spotify. And this particular field last play is, let's say the last time the song was played by anybody or by an individual user. And um, that's another field here. So we can create a model and I'm going to copy paste this for, um, to make this a bit quicker here. So in the models.py file, uh, we've already got that import. We create a model called track and it has four fields here. I said there's five, that's because the ID field here is automatically created by Django when you run the migrations. So we also have a title and a, an artist, which are both models.car fields. We have duration, which is actually a float field because for some reason the data has, um, for example, 200.5 seconds, so it's a float. Um, and we also have last play, which is a date time field. So with that, I'm gonna stop the server and we can run python manage.py make migrations and that will create the model um, in the database. That will create the database table with those columns. And then finally we can migrate and that will actually go ahead and create all of the, the data within a SQLite um, database file. So that is for the simplicity, we're just gonna use SQLite in this tutorial, but this will work with any supported database. And with that, we can now explain about this management command. Now, the only purpose of this is just to get the tracks.json data into a database. Most APIs work with databases, not files. So it's a slightly more realistic example. Um, so within this file, all we're doing is setting um, a path to the data file, loading it in as JSON data. And then for each track in the data, we are taking the last play field here and we're making it a date time uh, time zone aware date time object and then finally we take the key value pairs from each track and we create a track model um, with the keyword arguments as you can see here for each track in the data and finally but we use the bulk create command to create all of the tracks from that list comprehension here so that should create the tracks in the database we can test this out using manage.py again and this one is a custom command and it's called ingest tracks 
and that's what we've created here. So that should allow us to, if we look at the SQLite file, now I've got a VS Code plugin for SQLite installed here, so I can open the database and that should open an explorer down here. And if we look at the tracks table, we should be able to show the table and then you can see that it has actually in, imported these tracks here. Um, not the best view of this database, but you can see it here. Got last play as a date time field, duration, and all the other fields here as well. So that's the SQLite browser for VS Code. You can get that if you want. So now that the data has been created, we're now ready to create real API endpoints in the api.py file. So we're going to do that in the next video. This is the setup video. We've got to the end of that. We've got a database full of music tracks. Now we want to create API endpoints to get all of the tracks and to get an individual track by its ID, as well as look at how to filter these tracks by query parameters. An example of that would be um, if you look at the tracks.json, you might want to filter all artists that begin with a particular letter, all artists that begin with um, S, for example. We're going to use query parameters to do that in the next video. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and we'll hope to see you in the next video.